Ahoy there, YouTube! We're back again for another Bower Spotlights, where I spotlight a particular game crafter game and do a whole bunch of different things pertaining to that game. And once again, we're highlighting Fate of the Mortals from Blue Eyed Games. This is for two to six players, ages fifth or ages ten plus, take about fifteen to thirty minutes to play. And right now, I'm here with my lovely wife, Hello. and we are about to play a two-player version of the game. And I'm going to be teaching her the rules as we go through the game, so you'll get a good feel for how the rules work, and also. Uh, how a two-player version of the game works. So in this game, dear, we are playing as gods, and our job is to try and get various different things to happen. We're each going to have one of these secret objective cards right here, which are going to give us a different way to score, because we're playing as gods, and we're messing around with these people inside of this uh, little temple thing right here. So for instance, on this particular card, you would want the red person to escape with the, uh, the boots. So you'd want them to escape with that symbol right there. Uh, you'd want the orange to escape with the bow and arrow, the yellow to escape with that thing, and you want the green and purple to die. That's what that symbol means right there. And killing people is relatively easy, so those are going to get you substantially less points. So each of us are going to get one of these cards, and we're each going to have our own secret objectives. Now the first thing I want to mention when you're playing this game is this is a very quick game. Don't freak out if you only get one or two of these done. They are difficult to accomplish. But that being said, in a two-player game, you are going to have more control. So what's first going to happen is we're each going to get one of these cards. Now, I've also dealt us two-player reference cards. Normally, you'd only get one, but luckily, since we're playing two players, you can use both sides like this, which is nice. We each get one hidden passage. A hidden passage is uh, one-time use, and you only get to use it one time. Uh, so make sure you use it. You don't get anything special for not using it, so use it. This is going to allow you to break the normal rules of the game, because as we start to move these different people, because each of these dice are going to represent a different uh, gladiator, uh, mm -hmm. the doors behind them are going to start being locked and closed, and the only way you can get through those doors, or through walls, is by your one hidden passage. Next we got this deck, which uh, I'm going to shuffle up in a second, and these are the card tiles we're going to be placing down. These are very simple to understand. If it's red, that means that person is losing health. So whoever moves into this is going to lose two health, but they also are going to be able to acquire this thing. Um, the shield? Yes. Likewise, there's some that are green that will heal you. Some of the other f really important ones, this is an exit, and there's only one way to exit this, which is through that arrow, so if you place that right there, first move, green escapes. Green wouldn't escape with anything, which means neither of us would get the points, but green would escape, and then the door would get locked, and then there would be no other way to get out of here, unless you used a secret passage to get in. We'll explain how that works a little bit later. Uh, but there's not that many exits, so if you have them, don't waste them. But most of the time, pretty self-explanatory. This one means that you get to roll the dice, and put it onto any of the ones that you would like. And then there's a very, very rare one, which there's only two in the entire game, which lets you pick whichever die face you would like. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal out three of these cards to each of us, and then we'll go over the actions you can take. And the actions are all on the player turn reference right here. Uh, oh, that should've been mixed up. Whoop. So most of them are pretty similar. So the first thing you can do is you can take one of your cards, you can play a chamber, and then you can move a mortal to that chamber. Now when you're playing the chambers, I want to make sure I get it right, there's four big rules that you have to follow, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so the first thing is a chamber may not block anyone's starting hallway. So you couldn't you know, block it so purple or any of these colors couldn't get out. They have to at least get onto the first square. Uh, the next thing is a chamber may not block the last open side of an exit chamber. Uh, so an exit chamber can never be fully surrounded. There always has to be a way to at least secret passage your way into there. Um, it must be placed adjacent to a chamber containing at least one mortal die, so you can't just place it all willy-nilly and just build like a giant hallway that no one's using over there. It has to be something that's going to be able to be used. And also, one of the chamber's hallways must connect with a chamber it is being placed adjacent to. So you pretty much just can't do like... Like, if that's down, you can't be like, there, I played my tile doesn't work like that right. most most of them are pretty self connecting yeah self-explanatory stuff so take a moment look at your secret card what you need to get done and then uh if you want i'll go first that would be lovely so on your turn follow your player reference take one action so the most one you're going to do commonly is play a chamber then move a mortal uh but you also can play your hidden passage first and then play a chamber 
uh, and then you move your mortal, or you could just move a mortal if you didn't want to play a card, or last resort, which you might do towards the end, especially if you're looking for exits or things to kill people, is just get rid of as many of your cards as you want and then draw back up to three. And at the end of your turn, you're always going to draw back up to three. So let's see, what do I need? Yeah, that's a good start. I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. Move blue. And the thing that I always do when you move something is you lock the door behind it. No one else is able to go through there. And then I get to roll the dice to see what symbol pops up. And so blue wah wah gets nothing. Now the other thing that I want to mention, and I'm going to fix this so it's more on camera. But he's got one blood. Oh yeah, good point. Do you want to keep track of that? How does So I just move this down here? Yep. And if he ever gets down to here, they're dead. They're so I'm dead. glad you pointed that out. When you first set up the game, you're just going to start them all at the top. And then... I draw back up to three, and that was my whole turn. I'll say that threw me off. Usually your health is a countdown. Yep. I agree. I think okay. Lucy mentioned that in uh, one of the videos, too. Okay. Oh, and oh, more wow. than one of us... Uh, more than... None of these are us, but more than one of the dice can have the same thing, so... Uh, Blue could have the shoes and green could have the shoes, but only one can escape with the shoes. So as soon as green escapes with the shoes, no one else is even able to pick up the shoes because they're gone. Right. Okay. So I can just do that. Perfectly legal. Close Put the door behind you. Yep. So red That's goes fair. down one health and then red also has the dice rolled. This Let's see what I need ready to do. Okay. Shoes. Shoes. Then you draw back up to three cards. Okay. Let's see. Woo! When does this end? When they this all get out? Yes, this will end when either... Or they um, die. When everyone's dead, or everyone's gotten out, or everyone is trapped, or a combination of all the above. Because it can okay. get to the point where someone is completely trapped and no one has hidden passages left, in which case no one's even going to score points for that one. So I think my next move will be to move orange this way. They get that. They lose three health, thank you. And then I'll draw back up to three. And we position the camera just a little bit. But you can go ahead and take your turn. Purple's out. Don't forget to draw a card. What do I need purple to do? So does he automatically have that harp thing? Yes. Okay. And that seems like a good time for him to escape. So I'm playing that down, and he is oh, going well, to damn. escape. Oh, I didn't that. mean to say that. Yes, you did not. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, they have escaped, which now means purple. We don't have to worry about it. So purple has gotten that out. Now, here's a situation that might arise where, uh, let's say that you needed red to escape with that harp. So what you might try to do is get red to escape, uh, just period, because red is no longer going to score any points, but red can still score meat points. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Draw a card, and there we go. Now, so, how this works is, normally the only way you can escape is by using the arrow. But, if, this is a good example, if you want to do the hidden passage, you could hidden passage and get orange out of there, too. In, oh, okay. On the off chance that orange just happened Even to be. Even though there's no thing there. Yep, and the hidden passage never gets blocked, either. The hidden passage is just, is just always there for people to take. Red escapes with the shoes. That sucks. So red over there. And like I said, this game goes pretty brisk once you get rolling. Okay. All right, what do we got? What do we got? What do we need? 
Oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. Who's getting it? Yep, there it is. All right, Orange is going into the giant crab and going to lose five health. Also, so this oh. is important to note, that if you go into a space that requires that you get the harp or the shoes, you instead just put it uh, towards the mask, uh, assuming you don't have anything, because the harp and the shoes are just gone. All right. Draw a card, and it's your turn. Oh. Oh, now I see my dilemma. Okay. Well, never mind. I'm just looking at the wrong thing. Can I do it? Yeah, I can. Yeah, what? Thing. No! God, how many so X's did you get? Here. This goes it. here. Yup, locked off. And then you draw a card. Oh, man. Alright, so what do I need? I need to get that happening right there. Can I do it with the cards I got? No, I can't. This really stinks. Ugh. I'm almost thinking about discarding all my cards. And I will. So that was my unfortunate turn. Your turn. Let's see, what do I get? What do I get? Alright. Alright. Yep, there we go. We've right. got the ring now. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get it green out. Now there can become situations where uh, two two dice will be in the same spot. If that happens, you can move both of them or you can move one of them. They can also split damage. Okay. Uh, they can split healing. You get to pick who decides who picks up which weapon. It does not. Yellow gets the... The shield thingy. It's not what they need, dear. It says who? It says me. <laughs> this is going to end poorly. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Roll it up. And they got that. Shield. <laughs> didn't change. And draw a card. So I can discard. If you don't like any cards, yep. Discard as many as you want. And then it's on to me. Let's try that again. Try it again. Yellow, roll the dice. So yellow goes down one. Lock it off. Come on. I'm gonna go ahead and move some of this stuff. Oh, you wanna kill somebody. Six damage to green, which one, two, three, four, does not kill them. You gave them the ring? Oh, I need to draw up the three cards. Where's the cards? I had to move them. Camera space. What do I need green to do? Ah, oh, but he's so far away. Okay, we'll go ahead green here. And he can heal three. So okay. blue is in a very bad spot. Oh my god, Dreed's dead. He's, yeah, he's dead. What do I do with him now? He he's, goes. Yep, he goes in there. With the his soldier helmet up. He's dead. So all we have left is blue and yellow. Oh, card. 
I need a card as well. Highlight blue. Harp cannot be gotten, so he just stays there, but yellow goes down two health. Oh. Oh, I can't even do what I want to do. Oh, I'm a noob. Because I can't block the last part of the extra. Oh. Draw a card. Maybe I'll just focus on this bottom half, because that's all that's happening. So, shield. I don't see a scenario where where I want to happen is going to happen. So, you know what? We're just going to kill yellow. Yellow's dead. <laughs> dead. Five health gone. He's not getting that with anything. And so, then all we have left is the blue. So. Who can. So, your, your options are. You can discard your cards, which probably don't want to do. You can just I move him into him there. Back. Uh, like I can move him. Oh no, I can't move him back. You could move him back through the, here, or but then I use my one hidden passage. Or you could put a hidden passage here or here to get him, and then play another tile here or here to get him into a different sector. Okay. And he only has four health before he's dead. Is it my turn? It is. I just killed yellow. For no reason. Just discarding? Okay. What do I need the blue to do? Uh, uh, I don't want him to die. And you don't want him to die. Do I think I've won? Should I just end the game now with all my awesome points? You know what? I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to hope that I have enough points in here. So I'm going to hit and passage him. Into another giant crab, and he's dead. Psh, dead. So now what we're gonna do is we total up our points, and it's really simple. You just see if you scored which ones you scored points for. So I scored points for my purple, and that's it. <laughs> Six. Thirteen. You got 13? Uh, plus 8. You got 21? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you crushed me there. But that <laughs> is how you're going to play a two-player game of Fate of the Mortals. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to, to check that out. I'll post a link down below if you want to know some more information about the game. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.